Um, I am Naya Paudel from Nepal, mm -hmm. working with the Forest Action, uh, one of the Kashmandu based NGO, and I am currently the coordinator of Forest Action. Um, well, we, we established in 2000, uh, since then we have been uh, focusing our work uh, primarily on uh, three areas. Uh, one, uh, supporting uh, local community forest groups. Um, second, trying to understand how uh, the forest policy and legal frameworks uh, enacts uh, and actually is being implemented at the local level and how that is uh, impacted on the local communities. Um, so trying to build on from that, um, and bringing evidence from the grassroots um, and trying to uh, influence the policy process um, through organizing dialogues um, and pu publishing a lot of different kind of materials and communicating to policymakers and media persons and also to um, other research communities. Uh, so this is how we are trying to uh, link uh, the local uh, grassroots action uh, with the national policy process and also uh, to some extent um, to the global researchers on how the decentralized and participated resource management works and what are the challenges in Nepal. Um, this is a primarily a knowledge-based advocacy to, uh, to implement and to uh, promote uh, the community-based uh, forestry uh, in order to support the local livelihoods and also to address some of the emerging issues like climate change. Okay. Well, traditionally, the government um, used to control um, all the forest. Um, and uh, most of the local communities um, who are heavily dependent on forest resources have been relatively um, excluded from using that forest resources. Uh, so our work uh, with the support from RRI is trying to uh, transfer the management rights to the local communities so that they can benefit from using that forest resources and support their livelihood and uh, also that would support uh, the national economy. Um, well, um, uh, in some areas, yes, in some areas, no. Um, the areas, yes, uh, are primarily uh, through RRI intervention. We have been able to bring uh, a number of civil society groups and media and other professional groups um, who now talks about uh, forest tenure and policy and governance, those th issues. Um, and, and these issues, um, which was relatively um, uh, not um, any talked in those days, now have been uh, mainstream in the politics. Um, and the new constitutional making process uh, has acknowledged a lot on these areas of uh, community rights, uh, inclusion, um, participation, these issues. Uh, but in terms of challenges, uh, because they are wider outside the forestry sector, uh, for example, the whole politics is uh, stagnant. Uh, we don't have been able to uh, craft a new constitution, uh, and the country is in the political transition since 2006. Uh, but it's still, we are hoping that uh, the politics will get right uh, and, <laughs> and we'll hope uh, that the forest issue will also get uh, uh, a positive uh, orientation uh, once the politics uh, will get right. Well, uh, um, well th there used to be a lot of uh, organization working in the sector of forestry, environment, natural resources, a lot of them. Um, but they were not uh, adequately focusing the issues of rights, the tenure, the governance. Um, so once. Um, uh, we were, uh, in a way, organized uh, uh, through uh, RRI uh, umbrella uh, in Nepal. Um, so we began to bring uh, these issues um, uh, to a relatively better strength. Uh, and now, a lot of those organizations which uh, already used to work in forestry have now prioritized and uh, are now we are much more organized in terms of uh, articulating and consolidating um, the voices uh, for uh, greater tenure security and rights. Uh, I think that is uh, where uh, RRI support has been uh, fruitful uh, in terms of bringing uh, diverse uh, action and actors together uh, to, to primarily centralize uh, the issues of tenure and governance. Um, yeah, these, these number of uh, conflicts, uh, particularly after 2006, um, has posed a lot of challenges. For example, um, because the people were under the suppressive uh, kind of political regime um, before 1990 and uh, even uh, until 2006, um, they were uh, found themselves excluded from the mainstream uh, politics. Um, so after 10 years of Maoist conflict and followed by a very popular people's movement in 2006, uh, we have a kind of resurgence of uh, a diverse group of uh, people who were historically excluded from the um, state. 
uh, have now um, been uh, mobilized their constituencies uh, for example the women's the dalits uh, in in uh, south asia you know um, and all kind of marginal groups um, now they are fighting for their uh, better status in the state uh, and better security of their territories, better uh, access to uh, their resources. Um, and in that context, uh, RRI uh, support and RRI uh, supported campaign has um, a kind of synergy um, in terms of supporting that kind of political movement and also um, securing uh, the resource and livelihood rights within that broader political movement. Um, well, uh, more, more challenges than, uh, than hopes, uh, particularly challenges from the point of uh, view of uh, the political parties and, and certain political actors. Um, they are uh, not uh, very sensitive or not uh, well informed on the very sectoral agendas of people's life and livelihood. Um, so they are talking um, uh, more about uh, centralized political power and once they get into the power, they will uh, be able to resolve uh, every issues. Um, but we think uh, and we have seen that um, unless uh, these parties are more uh, serious and focused to how their political agenda links to the people's poverty and livelihood, um, probably it's, it's very hard. For example, though we have very revolutionary parties and actors uh, in the uh, politics in the government now, um, they still have not adequately appreciated uh, the uh, value of people's access to these uh, critical livelihood resources like land and forest and everything. And though people have been talking about, political parties have been talking about uh, land reform and uh, land titling everything, and that has not been reflect reflected into their policies once they get into government. Um, so we see a lot of challenges um, within the political parties and system, political system, but hopeful in a sense that uh, civil society um, and the international communities uh, and a lot of professional groups, they are putting a pressure to the political parties that uh, their uh, politics should get straight into the agenda of livelihood, poverty and people's everyday life. Okay. Really, anything else just uh, need to be reset or? No, I think uh, the only thing that we need is to know that we have your permission to use this interview for our eyes purposes, um, to use for the organization on their website or however they want to use it. Is, that, is it okay to use this interview? I think that's perfect um, because, uh, <laughs> because uh, all our uh, aim is uh, to, to propagate you know, to these ideas uh, into as many as uh, possible, no? as far as possible. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay.